Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today we're going to talk about the Liquid Logic Alpha 75, which is the smaller of the two sizes that the Alpha comes in. Yes, I know I'm really late and behind on posting this, and that the RMX is the new hot thing out there. I'm hoping that I'll get to review that one too. This design is just one that gets a lot of hype from small paddlers, so I thought it was worth doing anyway. Um, it is a super high performance small design, and I think it's going to have a lot of staying power as long as you can buy them new and also in the used market. So let's start with a quick design overview of the Alpha. Even the 75 size, the smaller one, it's still a nine foot boat, which puts it in kind of what I call medium sizing, somewhere between a small and a medium. The hull kind of changes shape as you go from bow to stern. So in the bow, it has a very displacement hull type feel, then right under your seat, it changes to a flat planing hull. And then right behind your seat, it has sort of the defining feature of this boat, which is kick rocker. Now, that sounds like something that you would use to market skis. What is kick rocker? It's a point where the hull really aggressively changes shape. It serves as like a hinge point. By far the most unique part about the hull shape of the Alpha though is that the widest point of the boat is behind your seat. Whereas in most boats, it's somewhere in line with the cockpit, usually in line with your hips. That's also going to make some really unique handling features that we're going to talk about later. So what's it like in general to paddle the Alpha? I found that for the most part, it did handle like a displacement hull. So it had a bit of a looser feel to it. I found that I was doing better when I was starting my turns early because it has that displacement hull slip where you're going to get pushed a little bit downstream as you're making your move. This boat did fantastically well in the Mank. The rapid it seemed to like the most on the Moose was this big bouncy slide called Sureform. Because of that displacement hull, I wasn't dragging on the rock under me really, and I still had a lot of control in this spot, whereas a lot of boats it's kind of a bump and grind. Like most displacement hulls, the Alpha is also going to track the best when it is up at speed. Something that I found unique and kind of specific to this boat was not only did it like to be at speed, it also wanted you to have really fast paddle strokes. So I found that I was taking my strokes at maybe 80% of my full tilt speed. I think that for someone with really short arms who's used to maybe taking those super quick paddle strokes just to keep up anyway, this is something that you're really going to like. While we're talking about small bodies, I did find that the cockpit of the Alpha came up a little bit high on my body compared to some other small creakers that I've tried. Um, so if you're someone with a short torso, you might lose a little bit of leverage in this boat compared to a different one. Another thing that I think is worth mentioning is the plate B for those of us with short legs who might be paddling one of these boats. If you're pulling the bulkhead really far toward you, there's a sticker on it that says, if you go past this point, you need plate B. Basically all it is is a bulkhead that is a little bit wider so that your feet can't slip under it if you take a really big piton. So it's a safety feature. If you buy this boat brand new, they will send you one for free. Um, if you got it used, you can get one for about $30. The most important part though, is just to remember to actually order it so that on your first day, you're not stuck. Now back to how the Alpha paddles. For some reason, I found like it really liked having paddle strokes placed specifically around your knees. Um, in some boats, you can get a little more power if you go beyond that and place a stroke kind of by your toes, but this really wanted you to stay kind of in the power area from knees to hips. Because of the wide point behind you, the Alpha also steers primarily from the knees instead of from the hips, so you shouldn't expect to be engaging your core a lot. For a boat that is really loved by small people, I was actually a little surprised at how much muscle it did take to paddle this thing. By the end of one weekend in it, I was really sore in my core and my arms. The Alpha also seems to be a little bit sensitive to the kind of paddle that you're using. I usually use a bent shaft paddle. Alex told me to try a straight shaft just for argument's sake, and it did actually seem to make the boat track a lot better. Um, I can't tell you why that is, but if you are paddling this Boat with a bent shaft, I would recommend trying a straight shaft and just see how you like it. So let's talk about where the Alpha really shines. Like most nine foot small size creakers, this boat is super, super fast. If I were into racing as a smaller human being, I think this would far and away be my pick. Even for non-racers though, I still really love a nine foot design as a small size creaker. So most of the older size smalls were somewhere closer to the eight foot range and most of the modern ones are sneaking up to eight, six, if not nine feet. And I think that is because 
Before, we were a little afraid that that extra length was going to overwhelm someone who was small and not be able to maneuver the boat. But as boat design has progressed, it's not hard to maneuver nine feet of boat. Nine feet really gives you a whole lot of extra speed and momentum that you're going to need to punch a hole that is significantly bigger than you. I think the kick rocker also gives you a couple of like sensations when you're on the river that are just inherently fun. One of the things this boat does really well is eddy turns, which sounds dorky, I know, but it's just a great feeling when you turn crisply on that eddy line as the kick rocker engages and then disengages and you just glide in no problem. Another inherently really fun feeling that you get from the alpha, that kick rocker combined with all the width behind you lets you really just skip out of boofs as the curtain is landing on that stern. To me, that just kind of accentuates the feeling that I absolutely nailed it and it's awesome. The last thing that I think is a really big strength for the Alpha is that you can just make some super aggressive moves with that displacement and planing hull combination. I definitely found myself being able to make ferries and come in really high into lines that I maybe would have slipped around a little more in another boat. As I mentioned before, the Alpha has a very unique shape with the widest point behind it, which means that it also has some very unique handling features. These are things that I would more call quirks that are just something you're going to have to get used to because other boats don't handle this way, but they're not really positives or negatives. They're just something I want you to be aware of so that you don't immediately put this boat in a negative category when you demo it for the first time. The first thing I'll say is that the kick rocker is not really for everyone. It does take a lot of trial and error to learn how to engage by leaning forward and disengage by leaning backwards. And if you pick the wrong moment to disengage and lean backwards, sometimes the alpha will just develop a mind of its own and ride some boil line that you didn't even notice was there. Sometimes that really makes it feel like this boat is all plan alpha, there is no plan beta. Having the widest point of the boat behind you was also something that I really had to get used to in sort of boulder garden-y stuff. So I often found myself taking a turn a little bit too tight around a rock, thinking that I had already cleared the widest point of the boat when my hips cleared the rock, and then having that wide point catch behind me and power flip. Again, that's something that you're going to get used to if you invest in deciding to paddle this boat long term. Just be prepared for it the first time you take it out. That combination of the kick rocker behind you and the widest point of the boat behind you also means that it boofs a little bit differently. I found myself having to hang on to my boof stroke a little longer than I was expecting, so usually I'll let go of it once my hips kind of clear the lip, but because of that wide point behind you, you really need to hang on until that point of the boat clears so that the kick rocker is also cleared. If you let go too early, you're going to find yourself 45ing a lot and not really being able to land flat. Because the Alpha also wanted me to be taking paddle strokes at such a fast cadence and also because it steers from the knees, it made it hard to put in really minor correction strokes that I find I often rely on. Most of the time when I was making a correction, it felt really brute strength and kind of ugly. The solution to that is that you just have to be a super proactive paddler, especially with the displacement hull slip. It's just something you're always going to have to account for. Again, I don't think any of these things should be put in the negative category. I think these are all things that if you bought this boat, you would learn how to do effectively. Ultimately, most of these things are also things that will push you to become a better boater, which is never a bad thing. In terms of straight up weaknesses for the Alpha, I don't think there's a whole lot. One of them is that I don't think this boat is a big water specialist just based on how it handled in some of the smaller scale boils we have on the Moose. I think if you bought this boat, you could certainly learn how to paddle it in big water. It, just if big water was what you were doing all day every day, you might want to look elsewhere. One place you could look is the RMX. That thing looks pretty sweet. Another thing that I personally would consider a weakness is that this boat is pretty heavy for its size. I know a lot of people won't really care about that, but I have some pretty burly portages on my home run, so it's definitely something I notice. The flip side of that is that there's a lot of plastic in this boat, so it'll stand up to the mank pretty well. So the bottom line, which paddlers are going to really love the Alpha? Personally, the Alpha is not a boat that I would put a beginner in. 
And I'll tell this story. I actually demoed the Alpha twice. Once when I had just barely outgrown my beginner creaker and was looking for something a little more high performance. And pretty much all the women around me that I looked up to were paddling the Alpha. As an intermediate, this boat was really tough for me because it was just too fast. I didn't have the time I needed when I still needed to think about in the crux of a rapid exactly where I was gonna put that one paddle stroke that was gonna keep me online. It was actually kind of hard to roll because of all that width behind you. A lot of beginners, as they're first learning how to roll, will kind of cheat themselves backwards as they come out of the water, but with that wide point behind you, that's just gonna dump you right back over and it's kind of hard to overcome without a lot of experience in rolling. That said, when I demoed this again as an advanced paddler, I actually really liked this boat and I thought it was extremely high performance for a small design. If you paddle this boat the way it wants to be paddled, it certainly has moments of absolute brilliance. I think the biggest lesson that I learned from paddling the Alpha is what can be unlocked in my paddling when I decide to hit the go button all the time instead of just kind of floating through the boogie water and just turning it on at the big crux move. It was definitely a new mentality of kayaking to me, but if that sounds like you, someone who's always on go, 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 you're gonna love this boat. Thanks for watching, see you on the river. Don't forget to like and subscribe.